What is up, folks? We got the old adventure hat already on. I mean, we've already donned the adventure hat, the little Indiana Jones crusading hat. And that can only mean one thing, that we're going on an exploration mission today. You guys might be able to hear the truck. It's already on. We've already got the truck packed up, loaded up, rigged out, ready to go. It actually sounds like a diesel for some reason. Can you guys hear that? I don't know, maybe I'm just getting used to the way it sounds. It's, it's a new truck, you know, there's a lot of things that are different than your last vehicle, so uh, yeah, whatever, but it doesn't matter. So you guys can see right there, we got some tackle boxes, my little tackle backpack right there, kind of rigged out. I just forgot we don't have any rods in the front seat, so I might want to grab those. See, that's what happens when you start talking, you start filming, and then you just kind of, you get ahead of yourself, you get the horse before the wagon, as the, the older folks would say. But we might need a couple fishing combos here to actually achieve today's mission. And it's gonna be a doozy. Let's see, one, two. Oh boy, it's all screwed up. Oh, we got rods stuck on other rods. I'm gonna have to put you guys down for a second. Don't you just love it, guys? Love it, love it, love it. Okay, now we've actually got some rods, three to be exact, which is probably already way too many. So, I was stumbling around on the old Google Earth the other day, and the thing about Google Earth, for those of you guys who've never done it, I can't imagine very many of you, many of you have never been on Google Earth to look around, but you can really find a multitude of fishing spots, you know, creeks, rivers, hidden things that maybe a lot of people don't know about, and that's exactly what happened to me the other day. I found something. I found this tiny little neighborhood pond. I mean a neighborhood pond, a residential pond, but I have never seen it before. Never heard of it, never seen anybody catch fish out of it, don't know if there's fish in it, have no idea. One thing I do know though about the South is very rarely will you find a residential pond that doesn't have fish in it. That's a little known fact, but they almost always stock these kinds of ponds when they put them in. So. At least that's the hope anyways. So regardless of whether there's fish in it or not, I think it's time today to hop in the old new truck, drive like five minutes down the road because it is literally right down the road. My in-laws actually live in the complex too. So if I get called out for being out there, at least I have a decent reason for being out there. I don't even know if they have permission to fish there or not, but they live in the neighborhood. So that should help me out a little bit. One thing's for sure guys, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, well, this is where I think you're supposed to park. We've got woods ahead of us. Got a nice little trek through the woods, but there's a path right there. So I'm thinking that this is definitely, we're, we're on the right track here. It's just time to, to glove up. And even better, I've got the three rods that I grabbed are actually already rigged up with stuff from previous videos. So that's gonna make this, uh, at least the start of this morning, pretty easy on me. I mean, if I'm gonna fish a pond for the first time, I mean, we've got, let's see, we've got a spinner bait, great pond bait. I mean, we've got a buzz bait that keeps coming off and getting hooked on everything. But you guys know how I feel about buzz baits, great shallow water pond bait. And we don't know, this, this place might be shallow. I have no idea. But we've got that tied on. We could switch that out for a frog or a popper or something. We've got a Texas rig, which looks like a, a slim shake worm on there, but a little Texas rig as well. I mean, heck, if you can't catch fish in a pond with those three techniques, then either there's no fish in there or you might as well just go ahead and uh, head on out. I should probably grab though some extra plastics, maybe a couple extra hard baits. Let's see what we've got in here. Yeah, we got some plastics. We've got a little lipless crank, a little clutch. Maybe we could put a square bill in there just for the heck of it. Yeah, a little shad style, a little sexy shad or whatever that is. Square bill right there. That should be lovely. Let's throw a popper in there because it's kind of calm this morning. Ooh, we'll hit him with a, a bluegill popper. Check that thing out. Yes, this is starting to come together very nicely and maybe toss one smaller jig in there because this is a pretty small pond let's see what size is that three eight it's a little big there we go a little three sixteenth ounce natural color jig right there whabamsies and my little trusty terminal tackle box 
well. Now we are cooking with grease. I think bringing a scale is bad luck, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it. Pretty sure this is what every fishing YouTuber does before they go out. They just kind of <laughs> have a checklist of things. Like, all right, scissors, chewing tobacco, keys, fishing license, <laughs> drinks. We've got pretty much everything that we're gonna need. I guess it's time to start our little trek. And I'm following the path. I have learned throughout my years as an adult that there's a path, follow it. Actually, there was a path right there too. There's two paths. Oh crap. This is like a four-wheeler path or like a go-kart. Not a go-kart, a golf cart path. I bet you this thing goes like straight back down to the pond. Bet you anything. You gotta be careful in situations like this. Make sure that you're not walking on somebody else's property. Gonna have to be real careful, but like I said, my in-laws do live around here in this neighborhood, so. We should be good regardless. Obstacle number one, down tree in the path. <laughs> Jeez, got some treachery going on here. Multiple down trees, holy smokes. Dang, these woods got bashed by that latest round of storms here in the south. Wow, look at this nonsense. Gonna have to do the old hop over, I suppose. Oh, oh yeah. Man, we are putting in work today, getting our exercise in. <laughs> I think I almost see the pond now. I think we're about there. It would appear that path number two, <laughs> the path to the right, was actually the correct way, but that's okay. Pulled out the old Napperino, looked around, checked my surroundings, harkened back to my training <laughs> as an army guy. We figured it out, and baby, we are here, guys. Check this out. Oh. Now we are essentially in people's backyards. That makes me a little nervous. Don't know how receptive any of these folks that live here are to people coming and fishing this pond, but I'm pretty sure they don't own it. I believe it belongs to the community. At least that's kind of what I'm under the impression of. i tell you one thing that I'm going to do right off the bat, and that is try to stay quiet here because people could still be sleeping. It's pretty early, but I'm gonna toss the old buzz bait around and see if there are any shallow fish willing to come out and play this morning. Oh wow, there's a fish right there. I don't think it was a bass, I think it's a big bluegill. The water's pretty dang clear. So we're definitely gonna have to make some adjustments to our lure choice, but that's okay, you know? I'm not married to any one of these three lures. I mean, a buzz bait's great, but not when it's super calm like this. It actually creates a little bit too much ruckus in my experience. Ooh, oh, look at that. I just had a tiny little fish on there. Oh my gosh, what was that? I didn't even see what it was. I thought I was snagged on something. It was no blow up or anything. Something just came up and pecked. It, that may have even been a big bluegill, which would just be asinine would just be insane <laughs> okay well i was just saying i didn't know if the buzz bait was going to work that was just predicated on the fact that it's so calm but it all just you know what it really depends on is how pressured these fish are that's what it really depends on but ultimately i do think bait changes are going to have to be made here Ooh, just got another hit a tiny little hit i swear these are bluegill these could be bluegill. I don't think I've ever caught a bluegill on a buzz bait. That would be a uh, lifetime goal achieved right there. Something is just pecking at it. And that's typically what bluegills do with moving baits like that. If they do hit it, they just kind of peck at it. Well, the first bait change is gonna be an obvious one. I mean, it's so calm out here, but if you still wanna throw top water, just throw the old popper, popperino on there. Buzz bait was great, got a couple strikes, but they're also kind of short striking it. See if they have a better reaction to the old popper. Oh, ducks, didn't even see you guys there, or mallards, excuse me. I was just recently taught that there's a difference between a duck and a mallard. Had no idea. God, there's a turtle swimming over to it. Come on, turtle, really? I do not want to hook a flipping turtle with a treble hook. That would be, that would turn this really peaceful morning into a absolute disaster. 
Let's not do that. Oh, man, that was a nice bite, but he came off. Oh, come on, fish. That's three hits on topwaters, but nothing. Now, that actually felt like a bass. Like, that thing actually kind of hit it, attacked it, and pulled back. Got hooked for a second. Dang, I wasn't even looking. I was looking over here at these stinking mallards. Some life on the popper. Definitely not a, not a bad thing. I'm thinking these have all just been really small fish so far, which might be the issue that we face out here. And just like that, the top water bite just kind of uh, gave up on me. But not to fear, we do have a sweet little Texas rig set up here. Now this worm appears to be kind of tore up. So let's put this a fresh new Slim Shake worm would probably do the trick though. I really just want to get the first fish in my hands, you know? I feel like if we could get the first fish in our hands, give us some confidence. Oh, I just spooked something out of here. <laughs> Let me shut my pie hole and actually fish. There is no way that I'm snagged here on my first cast, is there? Wow, I think that's what's happening here. Well, this will give me a chance to, uh, <laughs> to redo my hook. It's going to pull this bad boy on off. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, well, I think I might know what's going on here. I think either one of two things. Either A, the people that live here or that fish here a lot probably use live bait. I've seen a bunch of bobbers laying around like that one. They're probably hitting these fish with live bait all the time, which can really get the fish used to eating live bait, which is good. You know, it's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But it can make it tough if you're coming out here with artificials. The other thing that might be happening is I'm seeing like a bunch of benches and seating areas and a little dock over here on that side, which I'm guessing is private property, so I wouldn't walk over there just out of respect. But I bet you what these people are doing over here to chum the water around where you live, you know, like bread or fish feed or something, That what that'll do is that draws in like the, the bluegills and the bram and stuff like that. And then you can come out there with a minnow or a worm on a bobber, throw it out there and you, your granddaughter or your kids can go out there and just catch bram all day. Well, what that might be causing, if that's the case, if all the brim and other panfish or whatever are over on that side, then the bass are probably over there too because they're going to be chasing those big brim and big bluegill or whatever, or even small bluegills. You know, that's what they like to eat. What about a little clutchy clutch, a little smaller than that spinnerbait? Work it a little bit faster. We just got to get a reaction out of these fish. We just got to get them, got to show them something that's moving kind of quick. That way they don't have a lot of time to think about eating it. We're kind of just going through the list <laughs> of lures that I have. And that's really what you got to do in this situation. There's really nothing else to do. Well, I had previously decided I really didn't want to walk too far up on this dam. Because I didn't want to disrespect anybody's property. But I'm pretty sure none of the private property starts until over there. Because I think I can see a sign over there that says no trespassing. So we're going to have to, boys. We have came too far and struggled too hard to not catch any fish at all. That just cannot happen at this point. Plus we've got this little drainage thing right here with this big old stack of wood. And that means there should be some semi-deep water around it and therefore maybe some bass. We're definitely gonna make sure that we're not on anybody's property though, cause I'm not that guy. Giant bluegills guys. I mean giant bluegills. There's no way they're going to eat this lipless crank, but we are talking about massive <laughs> bluegills. Wow. Look at that. God, you guys can't see them. There are some massive bluegills right there. Wow. Well, uh, you guys want to see me come back and catch some monster bluegills? <laughs> that might be the mission next time. Holy moly. That's a fish. Oh yes, finally. Gosh, on the lipless crank. On the clutchy clutch. God, he's running right at me. Gotta keep the pressure on him. He's not very big, but we've gotta have him. God, he's running right at me. That's crazy. Oh, he's barely hooked. Get him, yes, yes, yes. And he's got a freaking hook in his stomach. Look at that, guys. He's got an extra wide gap hook coming out of his stomach. Are you joking me right now? <laughs> Let's get these hooks out of him before he hooks me. This would not be the first time that the clutch 
came through in the clutch like that when nothing else would work oh wow let's look at that guys look at that freaking hook coming out of his face see if we can get that out of there for him i'm sure it's not too uh too fun for him i can't figure out like how it's attached to him we're gonna get you out of this buddy don't you worry Jeez, i don't even know how to get this out guys to be honest with you it's like way down in him well i don't think i don't know if i should try to take it out or not okay there we go we got it out we got it out we got it out and he didn't like that either Woo, guys first fish let's go ahead and get him back in the water so he's probably really stressed out so we just yoinked an extra wide gap hook out of him like out of his body look at that that was just in his like tum wow no flipping way okay well not only <laughs> were we finally able to catch fish and we might be finding them too we might be getting on top of where they are but we were able to save that little guy and help him out of course he looked like he was doing fine i mean he looked healthy on another note, there is a snake swimming across the pond right there. If you guys can't see that, that is disgusting. Oh, why do snakes even exist? <laughs> oh, I don't like snakes. Either that's a small gator. I'm pretty sure it's a snake. Yeah, it's a snake. It's wobbling around like a snake does. You know, the whole that kind of thing. Okay, there are fish out here for the love of God. We saw one. Jeez, I don't think, I don't know how many else there are out here. But hey, you know what that tells us though, is there's definitely some fishermen that come out here. Extra wide gap hook in his tummy. So there's been some anglers out here. And hey, if you're that guy, <laughs> if you're watching this video right now, and you live in my town, and you know where this pond is, and you broke off on that fish, holla at me in the comment section, because I caught him for you, dude. And I got the hook out of his gullet. I can tell you one thing, this wind picking up slightly, is only going to help me. It's picking up out there too, where I caught that fish with the clutch. I've had to put my rod tip straight up in the air and just increase my retrieve speed to like gunning it just to keep it out of the grass. It's an extremely grassy little pond, which is great. Great for the health of the pond and the fish. Gives the bass something to get up into and kind of chill out in. But it makes it difficult on you when you're using the treble hook style bait. fish come on fish yes sir another little one <laughs> out of the same little hole base oh he came off gosh darn it trying to keep my beast down so i don't disturb all these people that are probably sleeping dang it that was a small one but still gosh darn it same area as that last one man it's just like they're out there just kind of chilling but when I throw the lunker log out there, I can't get anything. That's weird. I had let this area rest for a minute after I caught that one. Came back. Boom, there he was. Just ready to eat. Okay, okay. Still, though, increasing signs of life. So I switched back to a weighted Texas rig, a really light 316th ounce like tungsten and a slim shake worm. I just feel like that smaller profile It's going to be better. But I tell you what, I am not leaving here today until I catch a fish on a Texas rig, okay? Because I'm just not going to be convinced that these fish will not eat a Texas rig worm. I mean, it just seems ridiculous to even say that. But that's how it's been now. I mean, the only bites... Well, that's not true. We had a bunch of bites early on on a bunch of different lures, but we, I don't know what those were. They may not have even been bass for all I know. But bass bites, the ones that we know for sure we've gotten have only been on the clutch. Now, I'm going to throw that some more too, but I mean, gosh darn it, I want to set the hook into something, man. And I want to see something with some decent size. That way I know that this place houses some monsters as well as some danks. Oh, I didn't think it would come to this. Looks like we're going to have to pitch the old girl back here. There could certainly be bass back here. Heck, it wouldn't surprise me at all if there were. I've caught bass in inches of water many times that was dumb yep i knew that was dumb no nah, come on oh god lost my worm yoinked it right on out of there 
as soon as I made that gas, I was like, you may not be getting that rig back, old Uncle Ojo. Oh, fish, a little one, a little one on the clutch. Get him in. Oh, he spit it and it hit me in the tum tum. Look at this little frisky guy right here. Look at this guy. Oh, what a wall hanger, baby. What a wall hanger. Wow, okay, wow. You know, you, you, you spend 30 minutes fishing a Texas rig, right? And just easing it around, just nice and slow, real finessey. And then you pick up the clutch again, you make two casts and you get a fish. Unbelievable. This might be one of those scenarios where, you know, I'm just ignoring nature and it's telling me, hey, these fish are chasing bait, obviously. Or they're at least responding really well to this clutch for whatever reason. Maybe it's the color. Maybe it's how I'm fishing it really fast. I don't know. But wowzers. That is just, that's amazing that I literally just spent 30 minutes fishing that Texas rig with nothing. Not even a nibble. And pick up the clutch. Two casts later. Whoa, bam half a pound a quarter pounder right there oh is that a f no i'm snagged oh no tell me no we cannot lose the only lure that's working i refuse to believe it what am i even stuck on here this same exact thing happened to me a couple videos back where i was fishing and i could only catch him on a clutch and i only had one clutch and then i broke the dang thing off are you kidding me this thing ain't coming loose. I am on it, whatever it is. A big log or something, maybe. Maybe I can just yank her off. Come on, come off, come off, come off. No, it's not going to come off. Going to have to break it. Going to have to break it, kids. Yep, broke it off. Unflipping believable. Well, that was kind of disappointing now, wasn't it? So, yeah, back at the house now. We hit that pond for a little while, you know, really didn't see much, some turtles, you know, whatever. But had a successful trip at that first pond, so we will definitely be checking out that pond again. You guys let me know if you want me to go back there and maybe try certain lures or maybe put my kayak in it. I don't know. There's, there's all kinds of crazy stuff we could do with that pond, but importantly, we found fish. There are fish out there, so next step would be to try to catch a big fish out there. So we will do that but i hope you guys enjoyed this little episode of kind of just cruising around trying to find new ponds you know it's uh it's a constant struggle for a youtube fisherman i'm always looking for new places to fish always looking for local places to fish like that you know ponds and neighborhoods that way i don't have to go real far i don't have to interact with anybody i can stay within the the confines of the coronavirus rules and all that good stuff but uh, anyways guys thank you so much for watching short outro today i'm getting out of here on to the next outdoor adventure. Fist bump, I'm out.